Well, hello everyone. Uh, as most of you are aware, um, if you've been watching the uh, EBC Bullet Comparator uh, videos, uh, I've got a 3D printer and I was trying to think about different things that you could potentially build with them. And one of the things I've always been curious about was how the actual coaxial rests work. And I thought, well, I should be able to do a proof of concept just 3D printed. And this, is, this video here is uh, exactly what uh, I came up with. Um, as a first prototype, it's actually worked. I've, I've actually shot off it. I'm just going to do a few little extra things to it to make it a bit easier to use. Um, and I wanted to, to demonstrate it. Now, I know most of them are in steel. And uh, I've come to the uh, conclusion after using this that the main reason they're in steel and aluminium and whatnot uh, is for them to be shiny because this thing uh, was quite functional even with plastic bearings. Uh, but we'll go into that a bit more. So what we have here are uh, some core components. So the main body and it's in two parts. So a top section and a bottom section that mounts onto the rest, they're just super glued together. Super glue is very effective on uh, 3D printed parts. And to complement this, we have a, a cap that fits the enclosure. We have a horizontal motion component, which is this one. And it slots in to a groove that's in there. And on the other side, we also have the same inset on there. And so that will slot in there like that. And you get your motion in that fashion. The next part with that in place is this one. And this is actually multiple parts. So it's a bit flexible at the moment. I'd print a stiffer one if I was going to do it again. And we've got the vertical component here. So this is actually just bolted in at the top and it slots in like that. So it's quite a neat fit, quite smooth movement. Now for the bearings, I printed them in one, one piece and sort of broke them loose. And uh, I think there's 0.2 millimeters tolerance in them. They're actually quite effective. They do, they're a bit rough at first, but they do loosen up reasonably well. Um, well, I, they need a bit of sanding to smooth them up, but ultimately, yeah, they work quite effectively. So that's the inner bearing, and that one goes, and excuse the angle, that one just sits in there, like that. Okay, then we have an outer bearing and what it does is it sits in like that. So that was how I shot it, obviously assembled, I'll just do that now actually. So these are uh, just little M4 screws to hold it in. And yeah, so I shot it like that. The handle, I've got a handle here, which was just a bit of, uh, actually from an old light fitting. Um, and it had a thread on it. And so that's actually threaded through. And I'll actually remove it to do it. So it actually threads into that. And then passing it through. locking it in, it just slots in, but I'm about to glue that in. That's one of the things I want to show off. And you've got your coaxial movement. Quite smooth, quite sturdy, and surprisingly strong. Uh, it could take my weight standing on it. So yeah, uh, it's, it's entirely possible to 3D print the coaxial rest. So what we'll do now while we've got it, 
is we'll actually just do a few extra bits. So what I'm going to do is super glue in a little screw cap for this so that I can lock it in place. So to do that, it's simply and I'll guaranteed I'm going to glue my fingers. Yep, there we go. So that should lock that in. Now the next part is I'll glue around here. that glue in place, I'll pop that on. Yeah, it's a bit messy, but like I said, this is a, a prototype. So I'll just grab some tissue to clean it up before it sets. Yes, I have got glue on my fingers. So, let's see, has that locked in? Let's uh, Looks good. Put that in there. Put that through. Try and get it latched. I think we've got it. Yep. There we go. So that is secure. And uh, very effective rest. Now, one of the other things I did was um, 3D printed an actual thread in there. And that matches a cheapy Caldwell rest, um, which I had as a spare, it's not my main. <laughs> and uh, it just screws on. So, actually, it's very awkward to do around the camera. So, what I'll do is just remove that and screw it in. Uh, it's very rough on the fingers. So there we have a 3D printed coaxial rest that has can take quite a lot of force and is very, very smooth, even with basically plastic bearings. There's good range of motion. Okay, so yeah, if uh, anyone's interested, I'm going to uh, put links to the the files up, and uh, you know, if anyone wants to have a play with doing it themselves, they're welcome to. I am actually working on another version, and I'm going to look at trying to use a, a linear rail for the horizontal movement. And I'm actually going to look at reversing the axes. So at the moment, um, looking at some of the rests, you're either restricted where you know left and right is left and right as it is logically. But having shot it, I found that the up and down was really weird. I actually preferred to push down to have it go up. But it seems most of the rests are either one way or the other. You can either put the handle in this way and have it work in this fashion, or you can reverse it and have the whole lot work in reverse, which just wouldn't make sense for the left and right. So I've got a design in my head that I'm actually going to try and put together uh, using a linear rail and some other things and yeah, hopefully get the best of both worlds in that. But uh, in terms of can it be done? Hell yeah, it can be done. And uh, this might shake things up a bit, you know, if people are 3D printing their own rests instead of spending $2,500 on the uh, commercial ones, then uh, yeah, it might make things a little interesting in the shooting world. So that's me, and uh, thank you for listening.